Harvard Medical School, really, they said, hey, the Ivy League still has one tiny modicum of respectability left. We need to make sure we destroy that. Take it away. Looking at my nose, but my knowledge ain't fleeting. Space repetition, give me something to believe in. Pass all my tests, but I just give them the reading. In the food chain, we're the ones that eat it. Harvard Med, ain't no bottom feeder. MD stands for my demeanor. Ask permission before I ever greet you. Does it radiate? Does it come with strain? Scale one to ten, can you rate the pain? When I knock the door, you ask who is it? I can rate you can the pain. Check my of coat, this it'll video spell again. my name. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a billion. That's yeah, you're messing with some Harvard MDs. Found my best friends for life from this Harvard MD. Giving everything we got for this Harvard MD. Now from the top, make it drop. Come get your Harvard MD. You got your offer. Now say yes to this Harvard MD. We're talking doc, doc, doc. That's a Harvard MD. You deserve the spot you got, future Harvard MD. There's some docs in this house. There's some docs in this house. There's some docs in this house. First question, does Harvard admit men anymore into its medical school or is it just women? Is it just perfectly uh, politically acceptable, multicultural, rapping women? I, maybe it's Maybe it's that. I'd like to spell this out now. I don't know if I'll be able to put it in my will. I don't have a living will. But if if I am ever, you know, God forbid, I get these threats sometimes when I go speak at schools. And I was invited to Harvard, though. The administration under that plagiarist president, Claudine Gay, they shut down my speech last year. Uh, but, if, you know, I go to these schools, I get these threats. If I ever, God forbid, am shot, like, like bullets all through me, like I'm Swiss cheese, and I am taken semi-conscious, or maybe I'm totally out, to a uh, an operating room somewhere, and one of those rapping women comes out to operate on me. I'm asking Ben Davies here, or uh, Professor Jacob, or any of my production team, please drive me to another hospital. I know you're going to say, Michael, you're pouring blood. You've got. I'd st- I'd rather take the chance. Drive me to a hospital. Drive me to the bad hospital across town. Where, where maybe the doctors didn't go to Harvard Medical School, but they also, they, they don't rap like this. Because I don't, tr- I wouldn't try, I don't know about you, I would not trust those people to operate on me. Maybe they got good scores on their tests. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I mean, at least for undergraduate, Yale and maybe Harvard uh, stopped looking at the SAT for a few years. I think they've recently reinstituted it because a bunch of, uh, you know, <laughs> let's, let's say unqualified uh, candidates made it in, but I don't know. Do they even even if these kids did well on their tests? The thing that's really cringe about this and off-putting, not only politically but even as a matter of uh, patients looking at prospective doctors, is how self-satisfied these people are. This is the biggest problem with these schools. Biggest problem with the Ivy League schools, and especially the the trade schools, the professional schools like the medical schools and the law schools, but the undergraduates too. They're so self-congratulatory. They think that because you were the valedictorian at your high school and you got a perfect score on your SAT or a relatively high score on your SAT, or you were just an affirmative action case or something, and because you, uh, I don't know, you were the class president or something, that because of that, you're done. You've won the lottery of life and you, you, you're you the greatest thing ever and you never have to work again. But that was part of the rap, right? I don't, I'm not studying for my tests, but I'm still doing well. Yeah, right, because you can't, it's impossible to fail out of these schools. <laughs> it's, it's still hard to get in, but it's pretty much impossible to fail out. I remember when I was admitted into undergraduate, the alumnus who interviewed me, he said, Michael, it's very hard to get in, but it pretty much requires an act of violence to, to be booted out of the school. Very easy to, to graduate. And now, these days, you see acts of violence committed by the students, and even that might not kick them out. This is a big problem, and it's a big turnoff. It's the self-congratulations, the self-satisfaction that really appears to be unearned. I think this is what's leading to a lot of the anti-elitism, or the, the populism or whatever, is it's not that there is an elite. I like there being an elite. I like that there are people who are smarter than me. The, the world would not be uh, very well off if I were the smartest person in the world. I like if I were the most knowledgeable person in the world, if I were the most capable person in the world, we, you know, the society would crumble in two seconds, okay? It's good. And even the fact that there are hierarchies. So hierarchies just emerge out of nature. 
That's not a bad thing. The left says we need to all be totally egalitarian and bring everyone down to the lowest common denominator and we're all living as Harrison Bergeron, like we're in a Kurt Vonnegut story or something. But but I don't mind that. I don't mind that there are people who are richer than me. I don't mind that there are people who are more powerful than me. I don't mind that certain people run the government. That's how governments work. The problem is these people are not good at it. The problem is that our elites are not that smart and they're not that educated and they're not very competent and they don't seem to have our best interests at heart a lot of the time. They don't give a damn about the common good a lot of the time, even as a matter of their own ideologies. And they're just bad at it. And they're so self-satisfied. I am quite confident that there were absolute divine right monarchs in Western history who were much less self-confident than these people are. Because at least the absolute divine right monarchs knew they had to answer to God. These people, half the time, more than half the time probably, they don't even believe in God. They view themselves as gods, which is always an undeserved and and foolish view of oneself. But especially now (laughs) when, when our elites know much, much less and possess many fewer practical skills than their forebears, who, whom they regularly denigrate. Now, speaking of bad education, there's a Girl Scout troop in St. Louis. I think they've now broken away from the formal organization. They, it might be an independent Girl Scout troop, but uh, they, they are learning new chants. So they're out there, they're protesting. I don't, I don't, already, bad sign, red flag. I want my Girl Scouts to be selling me cookies. I want my Girl Scouts maybe to be winning little merit badges for knitting socks, or I don't know what the Girl Scouts really do, but I like the cookies. I don't want them to be chanting with a bullhorn. And then this is what they're chanting. My seed comes older than you. Very weird. V- That's my main my main takeaway from it is not even for Palestine, Israel, whatever. Very weird to have little girls, like six year old girls, chanting this. The full chant was, "Hey Israel, na na na, boo boo, my sido or sido, I guess that means grandfather in some language, is older than you." Like we're you know the Palestinians had the land before the Jews or uh, whatever. I don't weird. It's weird, man. I don't, I know the Israel-Palestine is a complex issue, but I don't, maybe you're the biggest Israel supporter ever and you think we should wipe out all the Palestinians. Maybe you're the biggest Palestine supporter ever. You think we should wipe out all the Israelis. Maybe you, you're a Muslim, maybe you're a Jew, maybe you hate the Muslims, maybe you hate the Jews. And maybe you form your political thoughts, other people have in the past, over any, any of those topics. You have to agree, I think, if you're even in any way tethered to reality. That is really weird. That's really weird to have little Girl Scouts doing that. That's off-putting. I don't care how much you support Palestine or whatever. That's off-putting to anyone. Is No one wants that. No, the vast majority of people don't want that. I think running against that kind of thing, it's the same reason why running against is a, a, a very powerful political campaign. It's just, we just all know it's really weird and totally out of keeping with our tradition and with morality and with normality. It's just weird. And don't, if we could just not, if we just offer people a political option of, hey, all the really weird stuff, everything that's really screwed up, we're against it. <laughs> and we're for like no, having a good life. And we're for the good old American way of life that you had until five seconds ago. You, that's a great realignment as far as I'm concerned. Then we win, uh, no matter how disconnected our political class is. That was really good, huh? Ring that bell. Subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.